Good morning and welcome to your Wednesday devotion. I'm Pastor Jay. I'm here in my office at Christ the King. And I realized something. I realized that many of you did not get to experience our outdoor worship service and picnic. And also there were no video cameras there, so you didn't get to hear the message. And I think the message is extremely important for us right now in the world we live in. And so I want to share with you a question. It was an, an email that I received that prompted uh, the sermon. And I want to share a part of this email with you. And then I want to tell you in a number of different devotions how I answered it. I just think it's really important. So here's what the questioner says. In the first or second century, when an onlooker to the way, and that's in quotes, you, you understand the way was what first Christians were called, followers of the way of Jesus, decided he or she wanted to become a part of the movement, was it because they saw the works the believers were doing? And he has in parentheses, taking and abandoned babies. That's a famous thing that early Christians did. When the Romans didn't want a child, they would put them out on the trash heap to die of exposure, and the Christians took them in and made them their own. It was, you know, loving things like that they did. Promoting the onlooker to inquire deeper about the faith. Or was it that the onlooker was drawn in by the tremendous faith, and he has this in parentheses, willing to die rather than renounce their beliefs, which drove the onlooker to join the community? I personally think this question of why are people joining influenced the faith versus works question in the Bible. I think that the understanding of the resurrection was not the first thing that an onlooker would latch on to. And I said in my sermon, I agree with that. I don't think it's the first thing they would have latched on to. And I love this example. He says, that is the foundation of the house, which you don't see from the street. Our belief in the resurrection of Christ is at the very core of who we are. But you're not going to see that casually. I love that example. Now, here's what he says, and I want to, this is what I want to talk about. I think we are in a time not unlike those times. We have a smaller set of believers in an ever-growing sea of non-believers who are in some cases reverting to some really disturbing secular behavior. How do you build a church or ministry that is so compelling and intriguing that a secular person takes a second look and third look at what you're doing. I think the church from 2,000 years ago may have some things to teach us. And I agree 100% with this questioner. Um, this person wrote this email to me. I, I, I agree 100% because I think we've lost some of what the early church had. And that's what I talked about in the message, and that's what I'd like to share with you in this series of devotions. The first thing to know is that for early Christians, it was not an institution. There were no church buildings. It was not a, a, an ideology or a system of belief. I mean, at that point, it hadn't really been formed. What it was was a reaction. It was a reaction to what God had done in Jesus Christ, to that great news that they were saved, not based on the law, not based on how good they were or making the right sacrifice, but they were saved by the love of God. And that grace is something quite unique to Christianity. Um, if you look back in our uh, series of sermons that you can find online, you go back a couple of years, I think it was 2021, I did a series on different religions. And we respect religions of the world, absolutely. But what I said in there is you're not going to find a whole lot of grace. You're going to find a lot of, you know, somebody finding enlightenment within themselves or somebody following all the rules. You're not going to find a lot of unmerited favor. And that's what hit these people. That's what touched them. That's what made them know they weren't servants. They were children of God. And it was very exciting to them. And they lived out that excitement. And that was really the power of the early church that we can learn from. And it led to a few things. And that's what I talked about in my sermon I want to talk about with you. Uh, the first thing it led to was a sense of confidence and self-esteem. No longer was it about how good am I? Am I keeping the law? Is God going to get me? Is he going to crush me, you know, for my sin? No, you're a beloved child of God now. You're forgiven, you're accepted, you're washed, you're renewed. And that's what we need to remember as Christians today. We don't have to prove anything to anyone. And I found an example that I shared with the group at the picnic, and this is from the pop star Madonna. Did you know that she is the highest selling pop music artist of all time? Way beyond Taylor Swift, by the way. Over 400 million albums sold. And here's what she said in an interview. Listen to this. Uh, Madonna says, I have an iron will, and all of my will has always been to conquer some horrible feeling of inadequacy. I push past one spell of it, and discover myself as a special human being, and then I get to another stage, and I think I'm mediocre and uninteresting, again and again. My drive in life is from this horrible fear of being mediocre, and that's always pushing me, pushing me. 
And this is the key phrase that she says in her interview. She says, because even though I've become somebody with a capital S, I still have to prove that I'm somebody. My struggle has never ended and it probably never will. I think for a lot of people, there's that sense of inadequacy. How can I earn the right to be called a great person? How can I earn my sense of value? And it's just not true. You're given your value in your baptism. You're given your value by being accepted by Jesus Christ, loved by him. It's nothing you have to do. It's like a little baby being brought home by, by his or her parents. There's nothing you have to do. Just live into it. Just enjoy the fact that you are a child of God thanks to the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And be confident. You know, look, hey, I'm a child of God. I'm a brother of the king of the universe or sister of the king of the universe. I am a, I am a son or daughter of the creator of the world. So hang on to that. That's something the early church had in the beginning. Don't let anybody tell you you have to earn your way into God's favor. It just isn't true. So let's have a prayer. Heavenly Father, remind us how loved we are. Remind us, O oh Lord, that we can be confident, that we can stand up straight, hold our shoulders back, and take on the world knowing that we are your children. Lord, bless us with that confidence on this Wednesday. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. I'll go into more parts of the sermon on Friday and then into next week.